Hi everyone, welcome to Mastering Palo Alto Networks. My name is Rene Cardona. During this course, I will be showing you how can you take full advantage of your Palo Alto firewall. We are going to go over every single feature that this powerful platform can offer you to protect your network from any possible threats. We're going to take a look at all that, but first, I would like to introduce myself. I am Rene Cardona. I am a data center and cybersecurity solutions architect. I love everything that has to do with IT, especially data center and the cybersecurity realm. I love to be engaged in fun, exciting projects. I would like to always provide my customers excellent service by providing the right solution and the right approach without too much effort. I am a CCIE service provider and also a Palo Alto Networks certified security engineer. Support Palo Alto firewalls. I also support Fortinet, and those are the 48 firewalls, as well as the Cisco Firepower Threat Defense or FTDs. I also support other firewall platforms. By far, those are my favorite ones. I believe that Palo Alto's are very complete. It will have every possible feature that your environment will need. I do a lot of hyperconverged deployments. I work with data centers that are software defined driven. So policy driven data centers, uh, networks are flowing more and more towards a policy driven architecture. I do a lot of VXLAN deployments as well as working with Cisco ACI. You can find me on my personal blog site, rcitnet.com or via LinkedIn. In this course overview, what are we going to learn? I have broken down this course in eight sections. We're going to begin section one by getting to know the PanOS web interface. We need to know exactly where to look for a specific setting. So that's why we want to get uh, familiar with PanOS 8. In section two, we're going to be configuring one of the most common items on any firewall. And those are address objects, the structure of your policies. So you need to create proper objects and you got to name them correctly and look coherent. So you got to make sure that your firewall policy table is completely clean. And this is why we need to make sure that those addresses, services, and group objects are configured and used accordingly. In section three, we're going to take a look at the security zone. This is network security 101. You want to make sure that your networks are isolated and you control traffic that goes in and out of those zones. And this is why you have a firewall. You need to make sure that not everything is allowed to go onto critical applications or your critical server farm. This is why we implement a security zone. We also want to take a look at the Palo Alto interface types. We got plenty of interfaces that we can configure based on our needs. In section four, we're going to take a look at the security policies. And this is the bread and butter of a firewall. We implement policies to restrict traffic and we make sure that we're only allowing what is supposed to be talking between those firewall zones. We're also going to be taking a look at the routing context. So the routing context are those specific firewall sessions that are dedicated to route traffic. And this is where we enable dynamic routing protocols, static routes, etc. So we're going to take a look at that. And finally, we're going to work with NAT. So NAT network address translation. This is a very common type of setup that you need to be very familiar with because in most firewalls, there's network address translation involved. Either you're going to the outside, you need to translate yourself using the public IP in order for you to reach an outside resource. So we're going to take a look at that. And then in section five, we're going to take a look at those cool features that your Palo Alto firewall will provide you. We're going to take a look at next generation firewall features such as antivirus, anti-spyware. We're going to take a look at DOS protection profiles. So denial of service, this is a very common type of attack. And we got to make sure that we know how to enable Palo Alto to protect us from that threat. In section six, we're going to take a look at clustering. And we need to make sure that our Palo Alto environment is completely redundant. We need to make sure also that we're taking full advantage of the hardware that we acquire or the hardware that we're supporting by doing active active clustering. We're going to take a look at that as well as virtual system and virtual system is a very powerful tool that we have available for us. So we basically can create virtual firewalls inside our physical appliance. So we're going to take a look at that as well. We're going to take a look at session seven. We need to build site to site tunnels. And this is a very common practice on Palo Alto firewalls or any other firewalls in IPsec tunnels. We connect remote offices. We connect to third party providers. We connect to 
anyone that is not technically locally on our network, but we need to exchange communication and we got to do it securely over the internet. So we're going to take a look at how to configure IPsec VPN tunnels. And also we're going to be enabling Global Protect. With Global Protect, you provide remote access to your remote users. And finally, Section 8, day-to-day -day maintenance and management operations. So we're going to perform backups of that running config. We also are going to take a look at how do you upgrade your Palo Alto firewall from one panelist version to another. So you know how the process exactly perform so you don't run into any issues in case you need to do a production upgrade. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the prerequisites on this course. Very simple. You need to know a basic understanding of firewall operations. Also, access control list. I think this is also a very important topic that you need to at least know how the access control list or ACLs are structured. So you have your source, your destination, and the type of traffic, the service, and the actions. So allow or deny. Obviously, foundational network administration concepts. You need to know basic routing and you must know how you know broadcast domains work you know what is an ipsec tunnel etc ideally but not required it will be better to have a workstation with your favorite hypervisor such as hyper-v or a vmware workstation or virtual box and run a virtual palo alto instance so you can also practice at the same time we're going over the course so this will be super beneficial for you because i believe that there is no better way to test yourself than to practice uh, so it's very important for you to get on hands experience uh, with the palo alto platform or if you're lucky like me if you have evng you can deploy a lot of scenarios you can definitely deploy scenarios where we can do clustering network simulator engine such as EVNG or GNS3. So if you have opportunity to practice on those type of environment, that's even better. You can deploy multiple Palo Altos, cluster them, etc.